Hi everyone, I'm Candice Cubito for ScrapbookPal.com. I have here one of the most versatile stamp sets around, Gina Kay's Autumn Wreath Builder. You can create a variety of wreath styles with this, and then some. I've brainstormed 15 different ways to use the stamp set, but I'm just going to show you six. In order to make wreaths, you'll need to use Gina Kay's Wreath Builder templates. There are two in the set, a four inch template and a three and three quarter inch one. You can see that each template consists of one square and one diamond, or rather another square tilted. On one of them, each side is four inches and has eight points, and the other has three and three quarter inch sides, also with eight points. You need a stamp positioner for this, and I'm using my trusty Misty. I like to tape it down for security, but you may not need to do this. Also, you'll notice that I've numbered my points 1 through 8. It helps me keep track of where I have placed my corners of my cardstock. By the way, I'm using vanilla colored cardstock for this video. I thought it was a good choice for the autumn cards, but white looks good too. This cardstock is a 3 and a 3 quarter inch square. Also, to help me keep track of my movements on the template, I put a tiny X in the corner. My home position is number one, and every time I complete a revolution, I return my panel to that position. I put the stamp set next to me, and I'll clean and replace each stamp after use. The stamp I've selected is my favorite one in the set. The only inks I'm using are from Gina Kay's Autumn Ink Cube collection. They're all dye inks, and this one is called Fresh Asparagus. This first wreath is a very simple one. You can make the wreaths as simple or as complex as you want. I want to show you the versatility of this set. After I stamp the leaf stem, I move the cardstock to position number two. I move clockwise on the template, but you can move counterclockwise if you want. I'm going completely around the template. Ink, stamp, move, and repeat. I'm almost finished. This only took a minute or so to stamp this leaf stem all the way around and into a wreath. There we go. It's a beautiful, simple wreath, almost like a laurel leaf wreath. I dress this up a bit by making little berries with Nouveau Crystal Drops ripened pumpkin. I set this aside to dry and will return to it later to make it into a card. This is how the leaf stem was positioned when I made the laurel wreath. Now I'm going to change the position to show you how different it will make the next wreath look. I'm remembering to put my little X in the corner so that I know which corner I'm in when stamping and how to be able to come back to my home position. I'm going to take the same ink, fresh asparagus, and stamp all the way around the template. You've seen me stamp, so I will speed this up. Look how much different the position of the leaf stem looks on this wreath. Instead of a circular look, it gives an appearance of spraying out. I'm cleaning off my stamp and returning it to the stamp set. Now I'm taking this leaf stem and positioning it next to the first one. I'm using honey mustard this time. Uh, the colors in this autumn dye set are rich and they coordinate beautifully. Cubes are so much easier to use uh, with the Misty than the full size stamp pads. I was late to the party when it came to stamp cubes, but I'm a believer now. It's the same with the tidy towel. I have much less ink on my hands when I'm using it. I've gone all around the eight corners. This is becoming a gorgeous wreath. I brought this back to the start position and now I'm using an interesting leaf. It has open spaces. I can choose to color it or to leave it open. I'm going to leave it open this time. The ink cube I'm using is sweet corn. I've decided to stop with these leaves and colors, so now I want to put a sentiment in the center. First I'm stamping the circle that sort of looks like a rope. I'm using tomato soup. Uh, the sentiment says thankful, grateful, blessed. Oh, it's my favorite in the set. Next, I'm taking it over to my die cutting machine to cut a circle slightly larger than the stamped one. 
I put scrapbook adhesives 3D foam squares on the back and attached it to the center of the wreath. To finish up the card, I'm adhering it to a 4x4 yellow-green cardstock for my stash. Then I'm attaching it to a 4 and a quarter square card base. You don't have to only make square cards with the wreath builder. This is a 3 and 3 quarter by 5 inch panel and I'm putting it in the 3 and 3 quarter inch template. I'm going to make an A2 size card with it. I'm starting with the stamp here, again using the fresh asparagus, and I'm stamping around eight times. This is where the X in the corner helps me the most. I was always getting confused with the rectangular panels as to where I should position my cardstock next, and this little trick solved the problem for me. You can see that as long as I put my X in the next consecutive corner, I get a wreath shape, no matter what size my panel is. Let me clean this up. I'm, I put my panel back to its home position and now I'm using faded brick on a new stamp. This one also has some open leaves that you can color. I think it would look good if you put Nuvo drops there and made berries out of them too. There is a large variety of leaves you can use in the set, 13 in all. There are different sizes and shapes so you can make your wreaths different every time. There are three flowers, a pumpkin, and an acorn too, as well as five sentiments and a circle stamp. With this stamp, I'm using sweet corn ink. Really, you can't go wrong using this autumn ink cube collection. Any combination will give you a great looking wreath. I didn't make multiples of these cards because I was having a good time playing around with the stamps and color combinations, but if I wanted to, I would do one rotation of my stamp at a time. When I finished on all my cards, I would do a second rotation on all of them, and then continue like that until I was finished. I found that I wasn't parting with some of my cards because I liked them so much, so making several of them at one time solved my problem. I know I want to use purple at the bottom of my card, so I want to use purple in the wreath too. I have this little set of leaves here uh, that I'll use to give the wreath a nice little pop of color. I accidentally got some ink in the middle of my wreath, but I'll fix that later. I want to stamp the bottom of my card, so I found the center and made a tiny pencil mark. I'm using that as my guide to center my next stamp. In order for you to see this, I'm turning my misty around. Actually, for you right-hand people, it's in the correct position. And I'm placing my panel upside down. I'm placing my stamp in the bottom center of the panel and I'm inking just the flower. I thought I was careful in cleaning off the leaf part, but I managed to get some of the wild lilac on it. I'm hoping that the fresh asparagus will cover it up, and it does. There are three points where I managed to save this card. The purple ink has been covered by the green. That's one. Also, I have a smudge of ink on the card and I erase it using the mono sand eraser. That saved plenty of my cards for me. Last, I managed to get ink in the center of the wreath, so I had to change my plan for the card. I was going to stamp a greeting directly onto the card, but putting the greeting on a circle saved the day. I've decided to emboss the circle in greeting, so I'm using my embossing buddy to get rid of any oils that might be on the card. I'm stamping my circle with faded brick, and then I'm stamping over it with embossing ink. I'm using Lawn Fonts Clear Embossing Powder to give the circle a sheen. Then I'm repeating those steps for the greeting, eat, drink, and be thankful. I've used Lawn Fawn products for years, as well as Gina K's. I started using Gina's products first, but when my grandchildren came along, Long Fawn was the company I turned to for youthful stamps. If you look at their birthday cards through the years, 
you probably would be looking at lawn fawn stamps. From their stamps, I turn to them for other products, dyes, of course, but also their inks and embossing powders. I'll come back when the greeting is complete. I popped up the circle with foam squares, and now I'll put the card together. I often use three and three quarter by five inch panels because I like to put another panel behind it. The purple panel on the green cardstock base are a perfect combination for this card. I traded out my template for the four inch one, and I have another way to make a wreath. I've got my oak leaf, and I'm starting out with tomato soup. Then I'm going to slightly dab on the faded brick. At first I ink, stamp, and then re-ink using the darker color before I remember that I can ink then dab another color atop it and stamp down. Either way works. One is just faster than the other. Autumn leaves are mottled and that's the look I'm going for. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I can make a bigger wreath by putting my leaf above another and working my way around the panel once again. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the maple leaf. This time I'm using sweet corn and then dabbing fresh asparagus on top. I'm going to go around twice and I'll show you the panel when I'm finished. A word of caution though. The sweet corn and the fresh asparagus weren't as close in color as the other two. I should have cleaned off my stamp before I made each turn because I did slightly contaminate the yellow sweet corn with the green fresh asparagus. Here's the wreath. Does that say autumn or what? I've decided not to put the ring around the greeting. I'm using Gina Kay's amalgam ink on the thanks very much greeting. I'm putting this panel on a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card base. I erase my little X in the corner and this autumn card is done. This is a wreath builder stamp set, but you don't have to make a wreath with the template. Let me show you. I am back to my favorite leaf stem. I think of it as a foundation piece. I put an X in the corner of my panel. I'm going around three times to position three, and then I'm going to position eight and stamp. Next I'm taking one of the stamps with an open leaf design and stamping in position one, then position two, and then I'm going to position eight and stamping. Then I return to my home base of position one. My last stamp is comprised of solid leaves. I never really saw myself as a purple person. Well, never since my teenage years anyway. But I love the wild lilac with the green and yellow. I'm stamping at the first, second, and third positions. Then I'm turning my panel so that the leaves are on the left. I'm taking out the stamp that says, so grateful for you. Using um, the black amalgam ink, I'm stamping the greeting. Again, I'm using a purple background panel and a green four and a half inch square card base. My last card is a triple layer card. The bottom layer is four by four inches, the middle is three by three, and the top is two by two. I have layered them together with removable glue dots. Let me show you how to do it. I measure and mark a half inch on all four sides of the four inch panel. I lightly mark it with a pencil. I do the same with the three inch panel. Once I have them marked, I'm using removable glue dots to hold them together. I erase all extraneous pencil marks, but I don't worry about the ones along the sides because they'll be covered up by colored panels.
Here are the panels I'll add afterwards. Each one is a quarter inch larger than the ones I have secured together. So one is four and a quarter inch square, another is a three and a quarter inch square, and the last is two and a quarter inches. I put the panels in the misty and mark my corner with an X. I decide to stamp the greeting first. I'm using Thanksgiving Blessing. I haven't used this one yet. I'm using Faded Brick for the greeting. You could boss that if you want. I stamp it twice for good measure. I'm starting with the Blue Lagoon. It'll add a vibrant color to the wreath and I wanted to show you how nicely it works with the other colors. You don't have to stamp at all eight corners to make a wreath, especially if you want to include lots of stamps. So this time I will stamp at one, three, five, and seven. Then I'll return to home at one to add another stamp and another color. I'm using the sweet corn dye on this stamp. The next color I'm using is Peach Bellini. I'm doing a voiceover, and so you can't hear what I'm actually saying as I'm making the wreath, but what I'm saying is one, three, five, and seven to make sure I hit all my points. I go back to my home position, and I'm choosing another stamp. I decide to use Honey Mustard on it. I live in Florida, but I was just in central New York for a few days. It's my favorite time of year there. The crunching leaves under my feet, the, the colors on the trees, the apple picking with my family. It's just great. I have used the fresh asparagus on every card. I have a friend who made wreaths for a large catalog slash online store from Maine. One year, they made over 17,000 of their decorative Christmas wreath for them. Uh, they made all sorts and sizes of wreaths, even square ones, and everyone had green in there somewhere. So you could say I'm heavily influenced by her and her wreaths. And I'll put one more leaf in here, and this is the tomato soup ink. And now the wreath is complete. I'm separating the layers and adding a back panel to each one. After I put on the back panel of the second layer, I'm making sure that this layer lines up with the bottom one. Then I do the same with the top layer, matching up the stems to their corresponding leaves. All this left to do is add it to a 5 inch card base. I chose blue to match the Blue Lagoon dye ink. A peach or coral colored base would look really nice too. Now I want to go back to the very first wreath I made. I think it would make a good congratulatory card. I found a congrats die, cut it out three times, and glued them together to give it some substance. Now I'm gluing it to the center of the wreath. One of the neat things about this autumn wreath set is that it pairs so nicely with other stamps or dies you have. This is especially true if you have an earlier wreath builder set from Gina Kay. You can see that there were many different ways to create wreaths with Gina Kay's autumn wreath builder set. I hope this video got your creative juices running. Have a good day. Bye for now.